This is webisode number seven, and I'm Stacy Miller. I'm gonna take you on a tour of Italian bubblies. A lot of you have really come to know and love Prosecco, but do you really understand what it is? Let me give you a brief introduction. Prosecco is, first and foremost, a grape. Second of all, it's the wine that it creates. This is coming to us from northeastern Italy, from the area known as the Veneto. And if I can, have you transport you to the canals of Venice, being serenaded, excuse me, by a gondolier and enjoying a glass of their local bubbly. The area of the Veneto that grows these grapes has two distinct hillside designations. These are things you want to look for, Valdobbiadene and Cognolano. These are again two hills with a valley that is between them where the Prosecco grape also grows. But ideally you want those that have the designation to get the real quality of ripeness that we want in a Prosecco grape. I'm going to start by introducing you to Balbino. This is my favorite little Sunday brunch bubbly. Flirty orange cap, easy drinking, and not necessarily from the hillside fruit, but Throw in a little bit of peach syrup and make a bellini and you're set. The crown cap that capsulates this one is actually the kind of cap that almost all bubblies spend some time under before they're finished and put into a wire cage type of closure. So again, Balbino Prosecco. Now this is one, this is Nardi Giordano and they are very specifically from Valdobbiadene, one of the two hills. When you get a closer look at the label, you always want to look for the designation of frizzante or spumante. Pretty easy to remember this way. Either lightly frizzy or full spuma of bubbles. The delicacy of the frizzante can be quite nice, but the mouth-filling richness of the spumante is also incredibly gratifying. The final designation in very, very small production, this is on the top levels of all of the hills of the Veneto. This is Cartizze. Now Cartizze is also a grape designation for Prosecco speaking to ripeness, meaning the sugars in this particular grape are going to be a little riper, fuller flavors. Prosecco in general has the potential to be a wee bit sweeter than basic champagne because the champagne growing region is so cold that they very, very rarely get the same ripeness that we're getting in the Veneto. That's Prosecco. Now, we're gonna find a bit of confusion that will be immediately cleared up by the end of this video. The first is Asti Spumanti. I think there were some fun and frivolous little ads about that years and years ago. This is Muscat from the Piedmont region, and I'm going to attempt to classily open this in front of you. It is made from Muscat grape, which we may have spoken about before. Muscat has a beautiful light floral essence and can tend to be on the sweet side. So, every wire cage has six distinct turns to get it open. Hold the top, don't point it at anybody, least of all your cameraman. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Debate is off. Some people say remove the cage. I've been taught by French champagne masters that that's not necessary. I use it to hold on to the cork because my hands aren't as strong as many. Actually, a towel over the top is a very smart move, but I'm gonna be a bit brave. Turn the bottle, not the cork, and it shouldn't necessarily pop right out, but it definitely will have a lovely pop or poof noise. Let's give this one a little taste. Generally, incredibly frizzy, very refreshing, spumante again, dried on the label, and oh my gosh, that is astounding. It immediately rushes at you with a dose of white flowers and something that I can envision a little bit of honey. Mmm, refreshing. Almost lime meringue. Now we move immediately to stone fruit, peaches and apricots. Very, very delicate on the palate. It is sweet, but not necessarily absolutely limited to dessert. I put it here in our lineup because believe it or not, with salty antipasti, it's dynamite. Moving right along. What I have here 
are two of Italy's, if you'll bear with me, champagnes. They are using the same technique as champagne. It's called method traditionnel, unless it's in the champagne region. A still wine is made. That wine is then put into bottles where additional yeast and sugars are added. The yeasts then consume the sugars in the bottle under crown cap. And then the secondary flavors and aromas from that process are captured in the bottle. We are now in Lombardia, one region over from Piedmont where a lot of the bubblies are made. This is Balguera. Balguera focuses on Nebbiolo, which the locals called Chievanesca. Okay, lots of stuff coming at you. They took Chievanesca, Nebbiolo, Pinot Noir, and Chardonnay, the two grapes from Champagne, and they put them in this gorgeous bottling called Villa Quadrio. This is going to have the same toasty nuttiness that you're going to find in a fine French Champagne. Francia Corta absolutely emulates French Champagne. This is from um, the Lombardia side of Lake Garda, from the area of Francia Corta, focusing on Pinot Noir and Chardonnay with a lot of the same sto soil, chalky, minerally soil like Champagne. This is a very rare rosé version focusing on the Pinot Noir. So if you love champagne but want to try something different, turn your friends on to these, Francia Corta in particular. We move now to Emilia Romagna, my favorite region for food. Let's talk prosciutto, Parmesan cheese, and aceto balsamico, classic balsamic vinegar. They love salty antipasti, hence Lambrusco. Okay? Lambrusco is once again a grape. Now there are other blender grapes here, like there are in Prosecco. Didn't introduce you to them, but that'll come up on later webisodes. Lambrusco can go from bone dry and inky, and I'm not going to open this, but this has absolutely no sweetness. It is dark, dark red, and even has a little bit of tannins, but it's intended to be served lightly sweet, lightly sweet, lightly cold, and with your antipasti. Now we're going to try a rosato version. This is from Puanello. This is their um, Lambrusco Rosato. Puanello plays with all of the grapes of Lambrusco, um, including the one we'll get to next. But look at the beautiful color here. Light pink, sparkling. Expect to not necessarily be sweet. I'm actually smelling berries, cherries, dark berries, and actually I'm smelling nothing sweet right off the top. Fascinating. Cherries, pomegranates, refreshing. It's like a picnic all in one bottle. Spoke to you about Puanello playing with others. This is Puanello taking one of the grapes, Ancelotta, and making a bubbly on its own. It will be a little fuller red than this, a little bit more sparkling than this, and sweet. I challenge you to try these and other sweet Lambruscos with your salty antipasti. You will blow your friends away. The confusion of um, Moscato is very sincere. We had an Asti Spumanti, now we have a Moscato di Asti. The Asti in the name refers to place. This is the same producer, so we'll kind of remember this. This is Piedmont, Piemonte. Moscato de Asti is definitely for dessert. It is honeyed, it is sweet, it is very lightly frizzante so that the weight of your dessert is lightly washed away. Delicious, delicious, and honestly, something to make a lover swoon. I finish you off with a fascinating grape. Once again, Piemonte. Now, maybe because they're so close to France, they have fallen in love with bubbles, but this is a grape called Brachetto and a wine called Brachetto. Brachetto de Acqui, very specifically. That tells us that we're in place. This was Asti, that's Acqui, Piemonte regions. This is a dolce version, meaning it's a sweet version. There are some that are lightly sweet that play really nicely. One of my favorite pairings is with goat cheese croquetas, astoundingly good. The dolce version with your sweet desserts and chocolates in particular, dead on. It is strawberries, it is spice, it is lovely. Come on in and see us. This was Stacy Miller, loving the bubbles. Thank you. Thank you.